Part of the spoils of being a celebrity is the ability to live in a big, fancy, expensive house in Hollywood, or somewhere Hollywood adjacent like Malibu or Beverly Hills. Or if you happen to be a Broadway actor or talk show host, you might reside in a lavish apartment in Manhattan. But while Los Angeles and New York City are bursting with showbiz opportunities, they aren't for everybody. Some celebs prefer a place where they can breathe, enjoy themselves, and avoid aggressive photographers and autograph-seeking fans. Since they can pretty much live anywhere and just travel for work when they need to, many choose choose to live like regular Americans in beautiful, friendly, good old-fashioned small towns. Here are some of the stars who headed for the hills. Taylor Swift Unlike the majority of musicians from the country music genre, Taylor Swift wasn't born in the South. She was born and raised in Pennsylvania. After moving to Nashville to pursue her dream of a music career, she became so rich and successful that she could move anywhere she wanted. And according to Page Six, that turned out to be the small but fancy town of Westerly, Rhode Island. All those elaborate, star-studded, Instagram-breaking 4th of July parties T-Swift holds each year? Those are at her oceanfront mansion in the Rhode Island town where, according to Livability, the population is just about 18,000 and predominantly older, which means Swift and her old-timey bathing suits fit in perfectly. Jeff Daniels Celebs may move to small towns because they hate the smog-choked artifice of Los Angeles, or they realized they could live like kings and queens in places where a real estate dollar buys a lot more. But Jeff Daniels cited another main factor in his decision to settle in Chelsea, Michigan — fatalism. As he told the Going Gonzo Show podcast in 2014, he didn't think his career would last, and he kept imagining he would get a call from his agent to let him know it was over. So you keep waiting for that call, but I, I, I it just — well, when it's over, why don't we just be home? And on that note, Daniels moved his family to Chelsea in 1986, shortly after his big screen breakthrough in the Purple Rose of Cairo. Why Chelsea? Both Daniels and his wife Kathleen were raised there. And while he heads to New York or Los Angeles when necessary, Daniels has kept close to home as a founder of the Purple Rose Theater Company. David Letterman in 2015, David Letterman left behind the grind of hosting an hour-long late-night network talk show five days a week. After that, he disappeared for a while. He's been spending time with his family and growing an epically long, gray, scraggly beard — the kind a hermit or man lost in the woods for a decade would grow. And in fact, Letterman does kind of live out in the sticks. According to the Chicago Tribune, in 2002 he sold his massive mansion in New Canaan, Connecticut complete with a four-car garage, heated pool, and tennis court for $1.1 million and moved to another property he purchased that was even bigger. Letterman's 89-acre estate in North Salem, New York, situated in a distant but extremely wealthy suburb of New York City, includes an 8,300-square-foot house with six bedrooms and six fireplaces. Other celebrities who have held properties in the town include actor Stanley Tucci and former New York City mayor Michael Bloomberg. John Mayer when he isn't romancing one gorgeous celebrity after another, John Mayer is taking the stage or committing to record his personal brand of music. You know, the sensitive singer-songwriter soft rock sound that's piped directly into those listen-at workstations. And when he isn't carousing his way through Hollywood, Mayer is chilling out and finding inspiration back at his Montana homestead. In early 2012, the singer moved to a big chunk of land in Paradise Valley, Montana. According to Men's Journal, his stone and log cabin may sit on 15 cottonwood-covered acres, but he he doesn't exactly live the existence of a monk. Mayer's home is equipped with a recording studio, a private gym, and a driveway big enough to fit his multiple Land Rovers, he told the magazine. I know it kind of seems like I got the place just so I could say I have a place, but really it's pure of heart. It's not like I read a rock bio and went, oh, Neil Young, Broken Arrow Ranch. It just feels like a really original, organic choice. That said, he loves Paradise Valley so much that he named his sixth album after the place. Dave Chappelle in 2005, Dave Chappelle rocked the world of entertainment when he walked away from his top-rated Comedy Central sketch series, Chappelle's Show. According to The Washington Post, he also walked away from a $50 million contract extension. Not only did he drop out of TV, but he seemingly dropped out of the spotlight, going into exile for months. According to MTV News, Chappelle traveled to places where he could clear his head, far from the pressures of Hollywood and paparazzi cameras. He went on a trip to South Africa and then uprooted himself from Los Angeles to settle in Yellow Springs, Ohio. At the 2006 Blues, Jazz, and Culture Fest in Ohio, Chappelle did some stand-up and praised his fellow Ohio residents, saying, "'Turns out you don't need $50 million to live around these parts, just a nice smile and a kind way about you. You guys are the best neighbors ever.'" Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds 
impossibly attractive Hollywood power couple Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds are strongly associated with major cities, thanks to their previous work. Lively is the very picture of a California lady, but it still seems weird to not see her roaming around New York City like she did in her TV series Gossip Girl. Her husband, Deadpool himself, is a proud veteran of Vancouver, the Hollywood of Western Canada. But when they're not making movies and TV shows, the duo rest their good-looking bones far from any metropolis in the village of Pound Ridge in New York. According to E! News, the 5,000 or so locals in the Westchester County town report seeing both stars going about their business and running errands, including frequent kids-free lunch dates at the local hotspot, the Inn at Pound Ridge. While paparazzi don't mess with Pound Ridge, the residents will sometimes drop info to entertainment news media. One resident told E! News in 2016, shortly after Lively gave birth, Blake looks great these days. She hasn't lost all the baby weight yet, but it doesn't matter. She looks beautiful. Meryl Streep the biggest movie star in the world, or at least the most awarded, Meryl Streep has three Oscars and 21 Oscar nominations for her acting. She's a master thespian, and she's also someone who has never gotten caught up in all the extras of celebrity life. Streep wants her peace and quiet, and the lovely town of Salisbury, Connecticut gives her exactly that. According to WTNH News, Streep first landed in the town of 3,600 people back in 1975. Just out of Yale Drama School, she scored her first professional gig in Connecticut, acting in five plays over the course of six weeks for the National Playwriting Conference. Something about Salisbury charmed Streep. Perhaps it was the old-fashioned Main Street or the still-up-and-running general store, because she's kept a home there for years. Zach Galifianakis Funny man Zach Galifianakis was born and raised in North Carolina. According to the News & Observer, he grew up in Wilkesboro and attended North Carolina State University and Raleigh before embarking on his successful and quirky career. While he has to spend a lot of time in California for work, Galifianakis never quite left North Carolina. He owns a 60-acre farm in rural northeastern Allegheny County, home of the Blue Ridge Mountains, and he has hopes to someday convert the property into a writer's retreat. Steve Martin in the 1970s, Steve Martin revolutionized stand-up comedy with his brainy, deconstructed routines and filled venues in the process. He walked away from the game in 1981 before his act could get stale. And since then, he has found wild success in pretty much every random thing he's tried. He's starred in comedy films like Bowfinger and dramas like A Simple Twist of Fate. He's written plays, novels, and a Broadway musical. He fronts a bluegrass band called the Steep Canyon Rangers, and he even finds the time to collect art. Martin hasn't had the traditional career of a comedian, and the fact that he doesn't live in Hollywood matches up with that. In fact, Martin was raised in the LA area, and according to The Hollywood Reporter, he worked at Disneyland as a teenager. He also wrote for TV shows like The Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour in the late 60s, so he did the LA thing and got it out of his system long ago. Today he makes his home in Brevard, a small town in western North Carolina, which, according to livability, has less than 8,000 people. We know one thing, though, it's got at least one jerk. I'm a jerk.